Okay, this is the uh, RC Integrator Lab. Uh, there's going to be no maths here. I'm just going to talk through uh, what's happening. So uh, on the left side here, that's just uh, talk about square wave. So uh, I'm going to show this one first on the scope. So um, here we see uh, we've got a small resistor and a small capacitor. Uh, and when it's, when we've got small capacitor, it's going to charge up quite quickly. So we get almost it almost looks like a square wave in this case. Uh, then uh, what we can do is um, reduce the uh, resistor a lot more. So most of the voltage then will drop across uh, the resistor, and less will drop across the capacitor. And also, if we increase the the size of the capacitor, then obviously it's going to take a lot longer to charge up. So you get a bit of a so this curve now becomes steeper, yeah? So uh, then, so with a large capacitor and large resistance, you end up getting this shape. So we'll show that on the scope. So let's have a quick look at the scope and we can see that. Grab that. Okay, so uh, there's the scope. Now, we can see here, what I'm going to do is... Um, change the values and at the moment you can see if I point around here you can see that uh, the capacitor is charging up quite quickly so it's almost emulating the square wave here I just take take this down a bit so you can see there's a square wave now uh, if I increase the um, capacitance value or, or rather that's first just increase the the resistance value if I just keep increasing the resistance value then I'm gonna slow down the rate of this, um, the rate of charges entering into the capacitor. So, because they're slowed down, it's going to take a lot longer to charge up. So, by the time it's reached here, it's going to have gone, and the uh, the polarity going to change, and we'll start coming back down again. So, as I increase the resistance, we should see this begin to to approach more of a sort of triangular shape. So, let's do that. So, I'm going to go up. So we can see here that's increased further. Now if I go up a bit more and further, but although I'm going up here, if I go quite high, eventually we start losing it because obviously the more we we go up in the resistor value, the more voltage dropped across the resistor, we're leaving ourselves less and less voltage to drop across the capacitor, and eventually we don't we just don't won't have any signal. And you can see here we we've got this curve. Well, we don't want a curve. We want to be able to get down. Here now, the the way we can do that is if we use a larger capacitor, then obviously this curve here you can see it's a small capacitor. Now, if we use a larger one, we get much gr longer time to charge up. So uh, the trick here is to use a larger capacitor. So um, I'm going to put in a larger capacitor here now, and then play around with the values and see what we can do with that. So okay, so I've put in a large capacitor there now. And let's uh, go down some values here because we won't need so much uh, resistance now. We've got this large capacitor in there. So I'll go to 4, so I know that works. Now we'll... Uh, so here. Now you can see we've got... A, now what's happened here is we've we've caught the capacitor very, very early. So you can see it's a much bigger capacitor because that might go all the way up here somewhere. So it might go a long way up, and we've caught it very early at the beginning of the curve. So that's why we've got a really nice uh, output. We've basically got, if I pull that up there now, along, if I pull this one down, and maybe just bring it up a bit, you can see that we what we've got there is um, the, uh, basically it's, uh, I'll just get it there. You can see here it lines up as we, as we're charging, as the, uh, you know when when we've got the um, the top here on the uh, uh, basically the um, the the square wave the, the output here is charging up, charging up, charging up, and then uh, obviously as the capacitor discharges, we're seeing that it's discharging slow because we've got it at the, we've got it at that early part, so it's not giving you that uh, that usual uh, discharge pattern because we've we've made the capacitor so large. You're getting it right at the beginning, so you get that nice, uh, nice relationship here. So you've got a triangle, like a triangle wave, which is 
which is what we're after now. Uh, basically, for those who know their calculus, you know that's the integral of that. Um, for those who don't know calculus, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you can basically you can say, oh, I can get a triangle from a square wave. So, you know, that's a useful thing if you can do that. There's lots of reasons why that's useful, uh, which which we'll come on to later. But uh, all you have to know is, uh, from a square wave, I can get a triangular wave. Uh, and for those who know calculus, you can say, well, from a square wave, I can get a an integral of the input voltage there is a triangle there. Now, um, what's interesting is if we now flick over to um, a sine curve, we can talk about that. So, um, and I've, in in my diagram here, I've just shown, probably just lift it up, might be easier. Um, here you can see I've, I've penciled in, you might want, just want to have a quick look at that. Uh, I've basically uh, penciled in some uh, letters there where where I am, A, B. So I'll read those out, but I'll point them out on the oscilloscope screen so you can see what's going on. Uh, and I'll just talk through what what's happening there so you can you can get a feel for what's going on. Um, so I'm going to change that over to a sine wave now. So now we've got a sine wave, and I'll take that um, back down to zero. And then we'll drop that down. Okay, so right, so what I'm going to do here, right? So first of all, we've got we've got a sine wave input. So this is a sine. Let me just reduce that down a little bit, maybe. Uh, the top, the top sine curve is the voltage in. So this is the voltage in. Okay, and at the moment we've got no resistance at all. So. Um, Basically, the same voltage is going to drop across the capacitor as what's the voltage in. So, so, to, so these both then lay on top of each other. This is very much like when I did the last uh, lab when I showed how the um, the voltage in was uh, uh, leading the uh, the voltage out. In other words, the voltage out was slightly delayed. Uh, well, this is the same. This is the same thing, really. Um, so, what we're showing here is how it looks like uh, an integrated output uh, so at the moment there's zero resistance so, but if we slowly increase the resistance we'll start to see if I pull down the top one there uh, if I start to increase the resistance and we're just going to go up in small units uh, let's just go back so there's 10 I've just you can you should be able to see that that bottom curve is now delayed. You can see, that, as we showed before in the last video, it's getting delayed, and we don't have to go up very high in resistance before um, it's completely delayed. So if we go up, move across, and you can see what's also happening is that um, you can see that the voltage is uh, is less as we go up. Uh, we're getting less voltage across the uh, the capacitor because we're going up in we're increasing the res resistance so there's so you can see that the uh, the curve the input voltage is much higher which which we would expect but the interesting thing is we only have to go up so far in the resistance and we get here look I can keep going up but it's going to hold there now uh, let's just turn that down so we can see it better but um, you can see that the voltage, this is the voltage across the the capacitor here now, and it doesn't matter now how how, how high I, I increase the resistance, we're going to get this uh, relationship between them now, which is the integrated output. Okay, so let me just talk, talk you through what's going on here. Uh, I'll just increase that maybe slightly and bring that down. So we're going to just talk through each of these points. So... We're going to start here, and we're going to call that position A. Yeah? So this is the voltage in. So this side here is the voltage in. Okay, This one is the voltage across the capacitor, which is the, which is the output voltage. Yeah? So if we start uh, here, and I'm, in my diagram I called that A. So at A, uh, the V in uh, is at the maximum voltage here, uh, and the capacitor is filling up from uh, the voltage input. So the capacitor here is filling up. Uh, sorry, capacitor here is filling up. 
um, at maximum rate um, momentarily it's got zero charge on its plates so uh, here you can see that if I just bring this down maybe bring this down a little bit more might be better uh, this this one here okay this is the voltage in this one here and it's at a maximum there okay and when it's at a maximum just bring that down a little bit and we'll just possibly move that around so we'll get that so it's on this place here and just pull that back so um, hold on a sec let's just get that over right so I'll just bring that up there right so here we're going to look at this as the voltage in this is at a maximum value now and we can see that when uh, the voltage in is at a maximum value the capacitor here has momentarily no charge on it but it's 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 coming through from uh, discharging here it's now charging up so after it leaves that point it's beginning to charge up so uh, it's changing very very quickly uh, when the voltage input is at its maximum okay and then uh, at the next point uh, here between the two which is interesting if I just zoom up now uh, just bring that so here's the maximum here now between I'm, I'm looking at this point here between the between the voltage in and the capacitor voltage this capacitor voltage is the voltage in at this point here <clears throat> Uh, v in is still positive, okay, so this is still positive, but uh, it's reducing in size, so this positive voltage is reducing in size at the moment, it's, it's getting lower in voltage, and at this point here, uh, hence the capacitor, is, it's still charging, so at this point it's still got a little bit more to go before it's fully charged, as you can see, uh, but the, the rate is, is beginning now to slow down, so it's charge rate is beginning to slow down, and then uh, at B, which is, um, um, where are we now? So at B, which is when the voltage input is at this point here. So at this point, uh, V in now decreasing and has reverse direction. So it's about to, you can see here, it's decreased. It's The voltage has dropped and dropped and dropped and it's dropped to zero. And now it's going in the other direction. So... Um, so changing, it's changing at its fastest. So I mean, the change is quick. It's it's the voltage has gone lower and lower and lower and going through naught, and then changes direction. This change is very fast, um, and so the voltage output uh, um, across the capacitor here is at its uh, maximum because this is uh, this is at the greatest change. And obviously, when uh, the voltage the voltage in here is changing at its maximum rate you're going to get the the maximum uh rate of charge flow so that gives you the maximum uh voltage on the uh on the capacitor and it's about and you can see it's about to start discharging so it's fully charged here and uh the voltage is about to go negative and when as it as it starts to go negative obviously the uh, capacitor voltage will then start to discharge, so it'll be going back in towards the V in. So that's what's happening there. And then uh, when we're at C, which is uh, uh, where are we? When we're at C, um, which is this point here. So at C, we're at this point here. Okay. So. Um, v in has reached. So at this point, the voltage in has reached its minimum voltage so it's at its minimum voltage it can reach and it's about to uh, start increasing it, it's uh, rather it's about to start uh, going the voltage the negative voltage starts decreasing back towards uh, positive voltage again and um, the capacitor is now at this point the capacitor now is uh, is now fully discharged so it started to discharge here now at this point it's fully discharged and it's about to start uh, charging but in the opposite direction so 
now it starts to charge but in the opposite direction as it comes down okay so that's what's happening there and then at D which is uh, then we're at uh, where are we at D we are at uh, this point here then at D we're at this point here where the voltage now has come back from its negative value and it's about to start it's about to now go positive so it's 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 at maximum a negative voltage there and its voltage is decreasing back towards zero again and now it's about to go in the opposite direction here and at that point uh because it's changing at its maximum rate here we're we're then at the maximum negative charge on the capacitor at that point so that's kind of a complete walkthrough of what's happening there and uh, as you can see the um if I move that back towards there what we've got here is an exact integrator so if ever you've done it and the other interesting thing is if you think about this curve as your okay let's just go around here if you think about this curve here as a sine curve we just pull that so it matches up there so if you think of this as a sine curve sine curve here going round then you know that uh the, those who know calculus, if you uh, integrate a sine, you get a minus cosine. Well, a cosine would be, when that's zero, you'd get a one for the cosine, yeah? So when the sine is zero, you get a one. So what you've got here, instead, this curve here, if you imagine it being inverted, that would be a cosine curve. But because it's inverted, it's minus cosine. So you can see here, this just gives you, with a resistor and a capacitor, you've got an integrator not only of a square wave but any any input signal and it's just proved it here because that's a sine curve yeah and if you uh, look at what's happening on the output you can call that a minus cosine curve if you're looking at that as the as the uh, the zero point that there is minus one if you like so you've got a minus cosine so that just proves nicely that the the voltage input to an RC circuit in this configuration gives you the uh, integrates the voltage in and on the output you get the integral of the voltage in so that's uh, this lab over um, in the next few labs we're going to start moving on to uh, inductance which is a really interesting subject it's probably the most interesting subject in electronics really although it's very rarely gone over in much detail but because it's probably my favorite subject so um, there's going to be a lot of um, tutorials on inductance and then once we've covered enough of inductance that you know it really well um, I'm going to combine both inductors and capacitors and we're going to start talking about phase phase angles between them etc it gets really interesting and then once all that's done then we can start getting on to some building some proper circuits and and using everything that we've learned over the last few weeks so uh, see you on the next one